Ladies and welcome to Mom's Night In. We have just a really special time together planned for you. And what we plan to do is just really introduce these wonderful women who are here with me today because it is Mother's Day weekend. And we're so excited to get celebrated, to celebrate other mamas in our lives. And this is just a time for us to just have fun as well as to encourage you and encourage women in your life as well. So with me today are some pretty incredible women. So I have Mary, Ro Mary Rose Belmonte, Pastor Amy Carter, and Miss Verita DeShields. And so just so excited to have you all. I wanted to just kind of go around Robin here and just have you introduce yourselves. Uh, you know, let us know the name of your kids, what you do, um, and actually maybe even your favorite drink, coffee drink, tea drink, you know, team coffee, team tea, you let me know. So Mary Rose, let's get started with you. Hi, everybody. My name is Mary Rose. I am the wife to Gaetano and two wonderful adult children, Angela Mia and Dante. Angela is married to a fantastic guy, Daniel, my wonderful son-in-law, and Dante is married to my spectacular daughter-in-law, Madeline. Um, I work at the church. I am an executive assistant there and to the live stream department, which is the department where Pastor Amy is leader over all of the things that she runs. Um, let's see. <laughs> yeah, That's great, Ray Rose. <laughs> and through the parenting class at Abundant Life. <laughs> yes, yes. I love helping out other parents with my husband, Gaetano. We um, have started a parenting course that we facilitate. Uh, we start another class in June for new parents and expectant parents. And then we will go through ages up until preteens, starting with um, three-year-olds in the beginning of 2022. Excellent. And I just was a recent participant. So I will second this class is amazing. I think in which the foundation of this curriculum is based off of, I would just encourage any parent, any parent to be, please participate. It is just gonna change your life, change your outlook about parenting. It is phenomenal. So I will second that and uh, yeah, look out for those resources for sure. All right, Ms. Verita, uh, how about you? Give us an introduction about you. Okay, my name is Verita and I am a mother to two grown children and one fantabulous grandson, Jonas. He's two years old. Uh, my daughter, Anir, is 34. She's married to a fabulous man, Jason. And my son, Don, is 32. And he lives in Atlanta. Um, he's out collecting testimony still, probably. Um, and But he's a great, great, great young man. And I work at the church. I'm the HR manager at Abundant Life Christian Center. Um, my favorite drink, I would have to say my favorite drink is Starbucks peach green tea Ooh. with a shot of guava, Trenti unsweetened. I did not know you could do all of that. That sounds delicious. I'm going to have to get that from you. That. <laughs> that is awesome. Mary Rose, we forgot to get you what your favorite drink is. Do you have a favorite Starbucks drink? Actually, just... Coffee with cream and sugar. Keeping it simple, getting it done. I get it. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Thank you, Ms. B. Amy, Pastor yes. Amy. Hey, everybody. Um, okay. So I am not a mother, but I am an aunt to three amazing nephews who I was very, had, was blessed to be able to be uh, very involved with their upbringing. So Jordan, 
Joshua and Caleb Carter are my amazing nephews and I love them with all my heart. And uh, two of them have successfully married some amazing women who I absolutely love and adore and are like, and are my nieces. And I also have a lot of other, uh, I guess you could say, uh, I've adopted uh, several other individuals in the church as my nephews and nieces. So um, yeah, I love them. I love being an aunt. I may not be a mother, but I love being an aunt and it is awesome. So, and my favorite drink I would say is um, Cafe Cabal, uh, Midnight Oil, prepared by Ian Martin or Valerie Martin <laughs> the Wellspring Cafe. Shameless plug. Wellness That's right. Cafe. I love that. I love that the Wellspring. <laughs> but for real, Cafe Kubal coffee yeah. beans are legit. It yep. is so good. Hey, good and call. Local. Okay. I see you. I see you, Pastor Amy, represent the local. And uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely visit the Wellspring because you can get all your fine goods there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That is awesome. Well, thanks for those, that intro lady. And I will go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Tatiana Spears. I am married to Addison Spears, who is a communications uh, director at Abundant Life. So I jumped at the chance of being able to kind of help and facilitate this because I think motherhood and parenting is a journey of, in and up to itself and it should not ever be done alone which is why you need a community for sure um i am a work at home mom so trying to balance the mom life balance the work life you know and i'm getting by with coffee and jesus and an amazing husband so <laughs> and of course a supportive community so super excited to be your host today so our next segment here is called spill the tea so pinkies up ladies this is called spill the tea so we have some questions just to be able to get to know you a little bit better, have some laughs, and just to be able to get a little bit more scoop into who you are and just kind of get some funnies in while we can, right? Because I mean, you got to laugh. You just have to laugh. I laugh. So, okay. So we're just going to have some warm up questions here, you know, kind of safe. And then we're going to get into like some really quirky ones. So the first is that I'm kind of, again, kind of want to round Robin here. So what is your favorite, maybe family TV show or family movie? And it could be any decade, any whatever, okay? Zero judgment as to <laughs> which TV show it is and let us know why it's your favorite. So if someone has an answer already, I would love to see, hmm, let's see, Ms. B, do you, does anything come to mind? Family, like a family movie or family TV show? So my favorite family TV show is Chris Lee's Knows Best. I love these people. They, he is a riot. And his mother, his grandmother, his mother lives with the family. And it's a, it's a reality show. So his mother lives with the family and everybody in the family is, they're all sassy. He cusses like a sailor. His, <laughs> his mother gives it back to him. What's it called? Um, Chris Lee Knows Best. Oh, you got the watch. crazy Southern family. Yes. Oh, oh my it's word. So funny. It's so funny. But then, you know, at, at the end of each show, they all climb up in this bed and they talk about their day. And then they all say, I love you. I love you. I, I just like the show. That's it's hysterical. Me. And I would say my favorite movie, maybe not my favorite one movie, but I love Hallmark movies. Oh, okay. Wait, have, I just got to, I just got to point something out here. She likes Hallmark movies, but she also loves horror movies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Not, Not horror. horror. There's That's a Jamie. It's called Ballad. I don't like horror. I like suspense, uh, thrillers, logical, scary. I don't okay. like cutting them up, you know. <laughs> no. Freddy Cougar. You don't like the, oh, okay. Gore. But I don't mind, you know, <laughs> something jumping out at me or something. <laughs> I don't mind. I mean, you know, I, I can watch a good scary. I don't want to see blood though. Yeah. Okay. I like Pastor Amy. Oh, Pastor Amy. Like so are you in a oh, no, I don't like scary movies at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if you had the opportunity to amputate, <laughs> pass that up. Yes, because my mother was a nurse. So <laughs> medicine runs in my blood. So oh, yes. okay. But okay. not scary movies. <laughs> so in real life, you would, you know, somebody needed a stitch or two. Absolutely. I'm your girl. <laughs> I can do it. And also, I hear Pastor Amy. 
Remember, she's a amazing person to travel with too, from what mm-hmm. I hear in terms of being able to sanitize everything down. Even pre-COVID, you were on it about you know getting Listen, those trays. COVID just got everybody on this on the page that I've been wanting them to be on for a long time, which is you wash your hands, <laughs> you sanitize, you wipe things down. But there's a vast, there's a really vast difference between sanitizing and <laughs> stitching. <up. laughs> Well, you have yeah. a skill set that's needed for that. That's true. <laughs> I don't well, know if that. I that anyone that. signs up to have her stitch them, scalpel them, whatever. There you go. No. At oh. your own risk. Oh, I thought you were supporting it. <laughs> Not at all. No. <laughs> well, Pastor right. Amy, what is your favorite TV show or family movie that you liked? Um, either growing up or, you know, just even seeing other kids kind of enjoy as well um I don't know if I have like one like specific favor that jumps out at me I like anything I this might sound corny but I do love um masterpiece theater oh I'm down ABC stuff you know yeah. mm-hmm. Rose actually uh, introduced that to me I love I love those those shows and a lot of the shows that are on there um not really into reality tv too much <laughs> it doesn't do much for me. Um, you so run congregational care. You don't need reality TV. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, ALCC, you provide enough reality TV for me. Okay. <laughs> I don't need to watch anymore. <laughs> Real life, folks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Absolutely. You kind of need to see to escape, you know? Right. Yeah. It's the Chrisleys. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, Mary Rose, how about you? Favorite family movie or favorite family TV show that you enjoy? I would have, have to say when the kids were young, the funniest, like The Incredibles, probably because Dante dressed up as Dash one Halloween and it was like the <laughs> cutest thing ever. Oh my God. So thrilled. Those dimples. He was just so happy to be Dash because he went about 150 miles an hour all the time anyways. So I love up. that. Oh, that is so <laughs> cute. That's awesome. Yeah, oh. I know for me, uh, for Luna at least, and she's she's two years old right now, but Moana is her jam. She's about the music. She's about, it's like one of the first movies that I introduced her to that she just I absolutely loved. So it's been fun to kind of watch her. And, and then for sure, of course, Frozen is like her, her jam too. So great music, as long as she can dance to it, she's about it. So yeah, that is awesome. All right, very cool. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Oh, I would love to know. Next question here. What is like your biggest pet peeve? Like it could be, you know, pet peeves that you experience in your own family or just in general. What is like a really big pet peeve mm-hmm. for you? So let's see. We can chart the opposite here. How about Pastor Amy? You have a pet peeve? Yes. When people make loud noises when they're chewing. <laughs> Either they chew with their mouth open. Or they, when they chew, you can hear everything that's happening to that food in their mouths. <laughs> it's like a little bit too much, right? Let's. Oh, I physically down. like have to. Yes, I almost like start to sweat. Yes, it's so, more than pet peeve. Let me guess. You've probably never encountered that with your nephews, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, they've learned. They've learned. That's right. Because <laughs> their 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 parents, or at least one of their parents, uh, shared my same aversion. To them. So from an early age, they learned very quickly at the dinner table. We chew with our mouth closed. That is hilarious. And I don't even know what's happening to that food while it's in your mouth. So you figure out a way to make it quiet. But <laughs> yes. all right, good to know. Mary Rose, how about you? Biggest pet peeve. Probably when people are like not self-aware, like spatially, or they're just like on top of you or mow you down, like just completely <laughs> clueless, unaware of anyone around them. Yeah. So maybe the six, the six feet distance was like a really great thing for you, right? <laughs> no, no, honestly, no. Honestly, no. It's like people that just don't pay attention like at all and aren't like okay. even like realizing you exist so no really the six physical distancing bothered me I did not like that at all so it does yeah. it wouldn't be the same. <laughs> we're Italian so, yeah gotcha. I love hugging yeah. people touching people this has been very hard oh, I get you same yeah. way 
I get it for sure. Miss B, how about you? I, I mean, I'm pretty easygoing. So I'm, I was trying to think what would be my biggest pet peeve? Um, okay, so right now, probably these masks. I, I, I oh, hate yeah. wearing the mask. So much so I've, I don't know how many times I've gone to Wegmans to get at the door to go back to my car to get my mask. And, you know, I'm like, so why is everybody looking at me? Oh, I don't have a mask on. <laughs> That's my most recent pet peeve. Yeah. I, I guess my main one would be if I'm out shopping with someone, I, I don't really want you to rush me. Like if I want to touch everything in the store, like I could window shop. And my sister, she, you know, we go shopping and she's like, do we have to go in that store? Is it in the mall? Yes. <laughs> then yes. <laughs> you know Marina, it. Can I send my husband Gaetano to the grocery store with you? <laughs> oh, I would love that. <laughs> yeah, because he could just do exactly what you're doing and I could zip on out and get away. And, it, and, then they'll, and they want to go. They'll want to go with me. And while we're there, I'm looking at stuff and they're just like, please don't look at your watch. <laughs> that's an indication to me that you're ready to go. Then why did you come? Oh, that's funny. So I don't no, like pre-COVID, I, I, I would always, like Target was my jam. Like I, and I, it's on purpose. I think it was just for me that they had a little cafe area. So I would get my popcorn, I get my Starbucks, I'd walk around. Wow. And I literally target, I literally call it like a target time warp because in my mind, my head says, this was a 30 minute experience, but my watch told me this was a two and a half hour experience. <laughs> and so my, Addison will always make fun of me that, you know, I would go and it was a target time warp every time. So I get you, Miss B. Sometimes when I'm in that shopping mode, I just want to walk around, peruse. Therapy. You know? I yeah. can escape, you know, a Calgon moment. I can get away. And <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That is very funny. Yeah, I know who yeah. I'm sending. sending him with you. <laughs> Make and it he's so helpful. Experience. We both are. Like, stop. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. This next question I carefully curated, and I'm really excited to hear the reasoning behind some of these selections. So this is a kind of a take, oh. a fun take, PG version take of Would You Rather? Uh, so <laughs> Pastor Amy, I'm going to feel this one to you because this visual just, I thought it was a perfect question to ask you. Okay. okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to take you back in time and okay. imagine you have your three nephews. Maybe they're like kind of around between the age ranges of like, you know, like between like eight and 13 or eight and 14 around that kind of, you know, they're all kind yep. of mixed around that. Oh, I got it. Age. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So would you rather uh, get stuck in an elevator with all of your nephews who are very hungry for five <laughs> for five hours or get stuck in an elevator with your celebrity crush who has terrible gas for three hours oh so my gosh <laughs> celebrity crush with gas <laughs> so you would not mind the gas being passed for three hours no, i i pray for him whatever we can <laughs> now if I was in an elevator for five hours with my celebrity crush and he's single <laughs> and available, I'm coming out with a ring. Let me tell you, have you met my nephews when they're hungry? Forget it. <laughs> they would eat Even as them. adults, I'm sure that would, would not be a me. They would kill me and they would eat me. So I wouldn't survive five hours in an elevator with my hungry nephews, especially Jordan. <laughs> So who is your celebrity crush, by the way? Because I want to visualize who this is passing gas here. <laughs> I don't, you know, it's kind of weird, but I don't have like one person that pops in my head, but I have okay, top three. Of three to take it. a combination of, yeah. of, of a man that would be a crush. <laughs> okay, good to know. And I think be, being because, again, you're well-traveled, probably within your purse, you have something that will help to ease that kind of gas, I'm sure. Absolutely, I got tons, problem I solved. got the Holy Spirit, and we would we'd get that wrapped up and taken care of. I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, Mary Rose, next question is to you. So, would you rather be able, and again, you're, we're, we're going back in time, you have your two littles, they're kind of, maybe one of them is still kind of sleep training, so would you rather be able to get eight 
uninterrupted hours of sleep every night or your child gets straight A's on every report card. Like if you knew guaranteed fast forward, they were gonna get straight A's in every class and you know, elementary school, high school, college. So what would what would you rather do? That's a tough one. I am I am one that loves my good sleep. I will say it's a healthy way to start the day. But <laughs> I would sacrifice some sleep to have my kids have straight A's. Oh, wow. that, is, that is some mama love right there. That, that is, is some no love. question. <laughs> that were stress-free and my kids weren't like psychotic because they got the straight A. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Good. Oh, bam. Know. See, just the idea of them getting all straight A's sounds really good, but I don't know. Yeah. But I would want that for them if I could make that happen. That's cool. All right. I got you. Great mama answer. Love that. All right, Ms. B. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, okay. So obviously you being an amazing grandma right now, and you already can kind of visualize this a little bit with little Jonas. So uh, would you rather have Lego scattered all over your living room, like perpetually all the time, or have Cheerio dust stuck on the kitchen counters forever <laughs> well these are these you said these are would you rather would you rather so would you rather have the legos forever on the ground or cheerio dust on the counters forever i'm experiencing both right now at the same time <laughs> so, um only because i'm gonna say <laughs> i'm gonna say um pro Mm. Mm. <laughs> Legos. I don't know because if I step on one, it is not gonna be nice. Yeah, those things can hurt. They I hurt. You know, they knock off your balance. I've almost fallen a couple. And of I'm times. already challenged with my balance right now, so I definitely don't need to add a Lego stuck in the bottom of my foot. Yeah. On the other hand, <laughs> Cheerio dust stuck on my kitchen counter forever means I will have ants forever bugs that's right bugs. Mm -hmm. I don't like that right. um so I think I like bugs way less I will scoop the I'll make a path for the Legos <laughs> the Lego the Lego that is some sound reasoning there that is that I would just make a path but the <laughs> bugs if the Cheerio dust is there forever, I would never get rid of the bugs. And I'm, I, I will move behind. <laughs> I, I, that's just the nastiest thing to me to have <laughs> the little sugar ants. Oh, I don't like them. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. no. so I would have to say the Legos, but though, like I said, I live with them both right now. So. Right. So you can, you know, that's kind of, it's kind of good because you can take into account the decision that you're making here. So I, right. so I'm gonna, when I get off this call, I'm going to check the counter. I love that. Okay. Well, thank you so much for humoring me, all of you. It was really fun to get to know you a little bit better and see, you know, would you rather stuff. So it makes sense. I get it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. This next portion that we want to go into, it's more about discussion and encouragement. And obviously all of you have incredible life experiences, um, not only in maybe being a mother, but being a mother figure to others as well. And knowing this pandemic year has been such a challenging year for so many, um, but especially for for mothers um, and for and for women in general who've kind of taken the brunt of a lot of things, challenging, you know, in finances, in family, in careers, in caregiving. And so kind of knowing the scope of all of those different things and knowing, um, again, your own kind of personal experiences with things as well. You know, I wanted to just have this moment to be able to just field some questions and really just talk about some of these things that maybe, um, you know, you've encountered in terms of, um, not necessarily just personally, but other people within your lives and just seeing how moms and women have really struggled this past year, right? It feels like there's the light at the end of the tunnel happening right now, which is really exciting and really great. But I think there might have been some things that maybe we're either still struggling with or maybe some habits or some things that, that have come about from this really, really intense and really once in a generation experience. So, you know, I wanted to kind of ask this question. So this first question, um, you know, and I'll, I'll direct this to Mary Rose first. Um, 
you know, what would you say to moms who are struggling still right now, you know, and, and kind of giving everything that all the responsibilities that kind of are on the plate, what would you say to remind them of their importance of their role and who they are in their families? And this is kind of specific to mothers, and this could be mothers of littles or of teenagers or, you know, or soon to be college grads. What would you say to a mother right now who is kind of carrying all of that weight and kind of remind her of her role in the family? Um, I would first say, don't sweat the small stuff. Mm. You're going to have to let some things go and you're just going to have to be okay with it and really focus on what's important to you and your husband or what you have single moms who've said, you know, this is my goal for this year for my children and myself and just say, what is important to this family dynamics and make that decision and focus on that and not worry about the house being perfect, uh, everything being cleaned up every night or whatever it is, those little things don't matter. Spend the time with your kids, make yeah. sure that you feel good about yourself, mm -hmm. that you take really good care of yourself because you can't be a great wife or mother if you are completely undone. And so don't forget about that because it's so important to take really good care of yourself, starting with your time with the Lord, starting with time with, you know, physical fitness, good eating, and the other little things, let it go because you got to have the energy to chase those kids, be with those kids, enjoy those kids, enjoy yeah. them. Mary Rose, that's so profound because it is so true. I think, again, you know, there's obviously there were so many frontline workers who were, you know, whether it's a job they had to go to or they're in the medical field or something like that, they had to kind of do that. But for the majority of us, we really were kind of secluded in our own homes, which meant we were in front of our screens a lot more, right? And of, of course, given the rise of social media, it's like there's this constant comparison game all the time, right? So you're constantly hard on yourself, but then you feel like you're comparing yourself to others, especially professionally, probably even people you don't even know <laughs> on the internet thinking, well, I don't have my, my house isn't clean all the time, or I'm not doing that activity with my kid, you know, all, all those different things. So I think that's so great for just as a reminder, like do not sweat the small stuff and being able to, you know, understand what is important. It's to the love and safety of your, your kids and your family Absolutely. and the importance of taking care of you. Right. Absolutely. And sometimes what happens is that, you know, you, you cannot give from an empty cup. So if you're not filling yourself up with things that bring you joy, rejuvenate you, give you true, you know, rest and energy, how can you really give, you know, and Ms. B, I know even from your own kind of unique experience as well, a lot of single moms too. I mean, I do not know how single moms have done it. And I mean, I, in the past, and especially this past year, for sure, but practically, Ms. B, what does it look like, especially when it comes to maybe single moms who like may not have the biggest, may have like a consistent partner or not have like that sound community. What is asking for help and looking for help look like in, in that kind of uh, mother's journey? Well, it'd be, it would be beneficial if they have a good core group of other women or relatives that they can kind of lean on. You know, sometimes we think that um, we allow pride to get in the way and we won't ask for help, but you can ask for help. It takes a village to raise a family and that's whether you are married or not. Mm -hmm. There's wisdom that you can rely on. And I know for me, you know, I, I was a single parent. Um, I don't know how I would have made it without, you know, having my sister nearby or being around relatives that I could, you know, talk to from time to time. You know, you get yourself in an isolation sometimes and you're only having your, a conversation with just you and yourself. That's the worst two people to have a conversation with. You need to add other people into the mix because they can help you see beyond your immediate. And my sister was that for me. She was very much hands-on with schoolwork and homework um, where I would go to work during the day. And that was a big help to me because when I would get home at night, I just didn't have the energy at that moment to step into that role. So I would say having um, a good solid group, maybe not a large group, but people you can depend on that can be there for you and talk to them, you know, be vulnerable with them. Um, strip down and say, I need help with this. Or I don't know how to, how do I handle this son of mine who's has this personality that I just don't understand, you know, and then 
ask God to help you. I know that probably sounds cliche, but mm -hmm. I ask him to help me with things every day. The, the most minute things I'm saying, okay, Lord, me and you, we got to go do this. So let's go. And he's right there. Mm. You know, Absolutely. Very... Inviting the Lord. Yeah. Oh, okay. Inviting the Lord and the Holy Spirit to just show you and reveal to you, you know, who to ask, you know, how to just get the support that you need and just to reveal to you kind of innovative ways to really yeah. help with those things. Absolutely. And I love that because it reminds me too of a scripture in first John three eighteen. it says, dear, dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with action and in truth, right? It's taking that action of, so what do I need in terms of support? Or even if, you know, you have that support yourself, but do you have a friend or another family member who might need support? I mean, you know, maybe that's a, you know, a hot meal once a week, you know, you, yeah. you're delivering that, right? You just sending a text of encouragement or of love or just thinking about you, I'm checking on you or, hey, how about I take, you know, so-and-so for a couple hours while you, you know, go do a target, you know, run or something, yeah. whatever it might look like, right? So having yep. that practical way to support. So I love that, Miss B. That's really, really great. Yep. Um, you know, Pastor Amy, I think too, and obviously kind of being in congregational care and kind of seeing just even firsthand how this has affected so many people. I think, especially with the seclusion, the way we handle anxiety and stress, you know, hopefully it could be healthier things like, you know, working out, you know, that kind of thing, or just healthier things to help relieve stress and anxiety. But it can be certainly an opportunity for people to maybe delve into things that are not really healthy, right? So um, when it comes to managing kind of that stress and anxiety, again, even though it feels like there's light the, at the end of the tumble, tunnel regarding this pandemic and just kind of things reopening and stuff like that, but maybe there's some negative habits or behaviors that develop during this time, especially for, you know, women or mothers who, who, have, who are still carrying this and are like really wanting to stop those, whether it's stress eating, right? Whether yeah. maybe it's one too many drinks, you know, what does that look like when it comes to kind of taking that inventory and then lining that up with the word of God to, you know, kind of just have that, have that check and then kind of moving over, uh, moving forward in a fresh way. Yeah, I think, you know, having a sense of self-awareness, you know, we all know what our triggers are, right? We all know, you know, when we're stressing and, and things that we do, sometimes it's subconscious, but most of the time we kind of have an idea, you know, and being aware of that, just being intentional to, to say, okay, you know, I'm not processing things in a healthy way right now. I'm, I am, I am, you know, when we're feeling, you know, especially as women, we get, we get emotionally loaded and we start popping in different ways. Um, and just knowing that when those things are happening, those are signs that something is not aligned in our soul. And we got to, and we have to give ourselves permission to not be like Mary Rose said earlier, we take off the pressure of being perfect. We are designed to respond emotionally. We're designed to have all the feels that we have. And that in and of itself isn't a bad thing. It's just, it's just when those things start to, um, it starts to go south when we don't deal with them in the right way. So knowing, you know, and, and then setting up a, a strategy in place so that you don't fall into those traps. If for some stressing is means that they start to crave, you know, maybe a little bit drinking more than they should. It's more than just a glass of wine at night. It's a bottle, you know, you're, you're getting off into, you know, you're not, you're not dealing with it in a healthy way at that point, then maybe you need to go through a season where you just don't have it in the house. You know, yeah. I know for me, stress eating and um, stress baking. <laughs> Yeah. So I can come home and after having an intense couple of day, you know, day and next thing you know, I'm, you know, I can whip up a small batch of chocolate chip cookies like that. <laughs> uh, you do that night in and night out and it really starts to add up. So you got to know what your triggers are being self-aware of that, giving yourself permission not to feel shame about it, but also yeah. putting some strategies in place to self-manage that is super important. And I also would say that as women, one of the greatest things that, um, my heart aches for women is when I hear that they don't have a support structure in place with friends. You know, your spouse is absolutely, you know, is your, is your, you know, your best friend and your partner in life, but women we're designed to also have friendships. We need that. Yep. We need girlfriends in our lives that we can go to um, and, you know, support each other, encourage each other. And so that's super important. So for me, you know, Brita said something earlier, which I just want to kind of tie back to. And she talked about how it, as a single mother, it took a village to help. And even though I'm not a mother, I see myself as a, playing a supportive role to all the mothers that I know in my life. So 
I don't look at it with a sense of, oh man, you know, that, that didn't pan out for me. I am thrilled that God uses me to support the mothers that are in my life mm -hmm. and to give them the support they need emotionally to be that fun friend that they can go out and, you know, just de-stress with. And then like with my nephew and his, you know, and their wives that I can watch their kids so they can take a break. So, you know, just being available. And I just want to encourage single women that might be listening to this right now that aren't mothers yet, or didn't have that opportunity in their life um, for whatever reason, that you still can be in the game and be influencing the next generation and I just want to encourage them not to um, disconnect from opportunities to support and, you know, be that for other people, for the mothers that are in your life. Pastor Amy, that's such a great encouragement. And it's so true. I think sometimes, you know, sometimes I think especially kind of in our society, it's really easy to kind of dwell on what you may not have, or it didn't, it doesn't, it looks differently or something like that. But sometimes when we look to see how we can be to help to others and look outside of ourselves, how yeah. fulfilling and how gratifying that can be, mm -hmm. especially as we kind of get into like our giftings and, and be able to support other people in our lives. And I think it's almost kind of that uh, phrase I, I kind of uh, came across where it's like, almost like give what you want, right? So if you want community, like yeah. being able to be a part, like looking for ways to be a part of that and support it. If you're wanting to, you know, to have a you know friend where you can just you know have maybe you're like well, no one invites me to a movie night or you know whatever like maybe a girl's maybe a hallmark movie night or something like well why don't i host one right maybe just ask a couple of people get to know them you know get outside of your comfort zone you yeah. know um when it comes to that so just taking the, those kinds of steps for sure and that was that's such a, a true encouragement um, you know, in our remaining time together, I just have a couple more questions. And one of them is, you know, I think I come across, especially a lot, social media about like self-care, you know, doing this, doing that. Sometimes it's like, you know, visuals of a bubble bath and that kind of thing. But when it comes to spiritual self-care, what does that look like? And how do, how have you implemented it maybe in your life or, or things that you've seen that really work well for others who are wanting to have that spiritual self-care? I think this ties back into kind of filling up your own cup as well with, with the word and with some of those experiences. So what for each one of you does that spiritual self-care look like practically? Oh. So, um, yeah. So whoever wants to answer first, go for it. Yeah. I mean, I can speak to, for me, um, it, it's, it is the word right? It's, it's, it's putting time in my, in my day, in my life, my week to make sure that I take time away to, um, you know, get in the word and, and pray and not in a legalistic, like check off, you know, my journal, this is what I did, you know, kind of a thing, yeah. but really be intentional about experiencing the presence of God. Um, personally, it's a relationship. The more my, our relationship with God is enriched and direct and, and, and ongoing, it's like any other relate, you know, just like relationships in our everyday life with our, you know, with your spouse or kids, if you're not cultivating that, um, and that is the single most important relationship in our lives. So as a single person, I don't contend with kids and a spouse. So, you know, I have a little bit more, um, obviously opportunity in time bandwidth to be able to take that time to pull away for people that are married and have kids. I know it's always a constant challenge and struggle. Um, so I'm sure the other mothers here can speak to that a little bit more practically of how to, but it is important to have that, you know, for me personally, if I'm not reading the word regularly yeah. and I'm not at least spending some time in personal prayer, I'm, I get empty real fast. So that's so good. That's so good. Mary Rose, how about you? Um, definitely all of what pastor Amy said, no question being in the word. Um, but for me, I would have to say focusing on what I'm thankful for and gratitude and just making that an everyday practice, always looking for the good in people around me and looking for what God has done in creation and just being so grateful and just, it's, it's a sense of praise that I have with God. And it's just like a constant conversation and just Sometimes just saying it out loud and just going for a walk and just looking and being quiet, having that quiet time and just being in a state of gratitude continually daily keeps all the negative stuff out That's good. and definitely not looking at others, but looking at what's going on good 
in my life and around me in the people that God has placed in my life and just being grateful and seeing all that and just continually praising him for those, those people and the things around me. I love that. That gratitude is just so powerful. I remember I shared this with my grandmother the other day, how early on when Luna was first starting to learn how to eat, like with like table food and stuff, it would be a mess. Like food was on the floor, food was all over clothes or face. It was like a deal, you know, when she was first learning to eat. But I remember um, there was one time I was like, you know, I would always like go under the table, clean, you know, clean everything because otherwise it would get sticky. It would stay, you know, it would just be gross. And I remember just thinking like absolutely just hating having to do all of that. And I remember one time like the Holy Spirit was like, or just reminding me of like, you know, food on the ground meant that there was food on the table Amen. and that food on the table is, was like, I, there was like, there was food in my home. Like there was, I had the ability to feed my child and to care for her and have the flexibility to, you know, work from home and be with her. So just this sense of gratitude, like, oh my goodness. Okay. I'm not going to complain about this, but, but it was like, whoa, okay. Yeah. Got it. You know, but just that perspective wow. of even the smallest thing. Mm -hmm. And even if it's not your favorite thing to do, but realizing its context and realizing the ability to be able to kind of experience some of these things, right? So that is so, gratitude is just so powerful. And I, I definitely echo that for sure. I love um, this example. Awesome. Yeah, it was just like, it was just like, so, so from that day on, I was like, I have food on the table. Oh, thank you, Lord. You know, <laughs> it was great. So just kind of making it a thing. It is so true. Ms. B, how about you? What does uh, spiritual self-care look like for you? So I could take a little bit of what Pastor Amy said about making sure you spend that time with the word in the word and with the Lord and then being so grateful for the smallest of things. Yeah. And I'm going to add to that at heart, I'm a worshiper. So mm -hmm. for me, I always have to have praise and worship music around me where I can openly express, you know, I can talk and say you know, to the Lord, but I love being able to sing his praises. So even when I come to work, I immediately set my atmosphere on my way to work. Mm -hmm. I set myself in my atmosphere. So I'm either listening to a praise and worship, or I'm listening to some kind of teaching, something to keep me encouraged because we don't know from day to day what we're going to face. But what we do know is that we're not alone. God promised that he would never leave us or forsake us. So I am very cognizant that he is with me. And like Mary Rose said, I am so conscious of being so grateful for even just his grace yes. and his mercy. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. For the things that we don't even know he prevented. Yes. You know, for so some, good. COVID was like a shock. But for those of us who spend time with the Lord, it was a forced slowdown. Yeah. It was a forced go back to the basics. Mm. And really think about the simple things in life. Like you don't necessarily have to have all these different varieties of food. You might just need bread, rice, potatoes, you know, and you can still live. And I'm not saying shrink your life down to that, but be very, he made us get very grateful and be very cognizant of the basics. So I'm, I'm, my number one is worship, praise and worship that I have to make sure I probably listen to it every day, four or five hours a day to keep myself and my spirit tuned. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm, I'm looking for opportunities to laugh and, mm -hmm. and find things to put a smile on my face. You know, um, I was at church a couple of weeks ago and, and I'm always thinking about this. And in service, the pastor came up and was doing transition and he started talking about um, just really encouraging us to, you know, just start thanking God for something, start praising him. And I'm looking around and, I don't know, people weren't responding like I would respond because I think sometimes we get complacent and mm -hmm. we, get, um, well, we take things for granted. But it could be that one day we're asked to do those things and we can't. Mm -hmm. And I, don't, I just don't take it for granted that we are able to thank the Lord for whatever, breath. So... Spending time in the word, being very grateful for what we have and worship, pure, uninterrupted, singing to the Lord about his goodness. Yeah. 
Ms. B, that is powerful. And it is so true that the influence you have in your own atmosphere and how you can set it, even if you're in a funk, if it's yeah. like, you know, you're having a hard time, whatever, being able to eat. Sometimes it's that song. Sometimes it's that, you know, that, that favorite blanket and a, you know, and a candle and the word and just sitting in his presence and being grateful for, for, for yeah. him and for all that he's done. And it is so true, you know, being grateful that we can praise and draw breath and every, every, you know, if I'm not dead, you know, God's not done that, you know, that song right. says, right. So it's like, you know, being able to kind of just live in that. It is so true. Yeah. I love that. Well, what I want to close here and just give you all an opportunity to think, maybe even think about and just kind of close it out, you know, obviously as you've seen, even maybe in your own life or the life of other friends, um, you know, being a mom can, can feel like a thankless job. It can feel like you're kind of invisible sometimes, especially when the rush of life and things like that. And so for a lot of moms, I think it means so much just to be seen and just even have like a thank you. And so I'd love for you to kind of close and think about a statement of like, hey, mama, thank you for, you know, fill in the blank. It could be, hey, mama, thank you for, you know, showing up for your kids, uh, you know, and praying for them, you know, whatever it might be. So what would you say? What would be a closing statement you would say? It could be any mom you can visualize or maybe being your own mother, but thinking of like, hey, mama, thank you for fill in the blank. So I would love for each one of you to kind of think of something that you want to say as a, in terms of an encouragement or just something you want to highlight, even if it's, a, you know, from the word as well. Um, so just want to give you a minute to kind of think about that. And if you got something, I'd love uh, for you to just jump on in and just say, hey, mama, thank you for, you know, fill in the blank. So if, if someone's got something, let me know. <laughs> I can say, um, right. I want to thank the moms and the sisters in my life that have heard me mm -hmm. and let me tell them what is on my heart and what has been hard and heard me. And made me feel that they heard me yeah and that was priceless for me because it is just like like none other when a woman identifies with you and gets yeah. it and you know that they get it being selfless like that is just priceless mm. thank you for sharing that love that it's awesome yeah Miss B, um, how about you? It feels like something's really, really. Because <laughs> I'm a softy, so. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and my mom's not here. She's been passed mm -hmm. off for some time. So I guess I would say, yeah. Um. Thank you to the moms that have extended themselves to other moms, mm -hmm. and filled in the gap for them. You know that that present mom for them so thank you for having room to be a mom to someone else mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think I would say two things one I would say to the moms that I know um thank you for never giving up and yeah. for showing up every day to do an often um thankless job to a certain extent and oftentimes going through your day without people being fully aware of just how much of yourself you sacrifice yeah um to fill that role and to sit in the seat that you sit in and i think you know the other thing that i would just want to say if i can tatiana just a quick little verse scripture please do please do and it's something that you know we're i was just thinking about this and i love this verse and i think about it and sometimes i pray this verse over my friends that are mothers and women and the women in my life. Um, and it's Proverbs 31, 25. And it says, she's clothed with strength and dignity. Mm. She can laugh at the days to come. And, you know, I speak that over the women in my life because I say, I, because to me, that means she's clothed with the strength of God and the dignity of who she is in Christ. And when a woman is, has relies on the strength of God and the dignity of her design, her unique design, and she's fully aware of that. Yeah. She can laugh at the days to come and whatever they may bring because yeah. her assurance and her hope and her strength comes from God. And whatever the circumstances of parenting and family and, and, and being, you know, a mother may bring her, she can laugh at the days to come because of that strength and dignity. And so I pray that over the women in my life that I, that I, you know, am in a relationship with. And I, and I, tonight, I just want to 
speak that over all the women watching this tonight. Amen. You can laugh Absolutely. at the days to come. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Because there's joy. There is joy for sure in the Lord. That yeah. is powerful, ladies. And with that, with that powerful, oh, that's going to stay with me. I love that. Um, thank you so much for spending your precious time with us today. And we are just so grateful for your wisdom and your experiences that you've shared. And please, and you know, if you're watching this and you see any one of these ladies um, as you're getting your, you know, cup of coffee at the Wellspring, uh, <laughs> Tell them thank you and tell them, you know, how this has impacted you and, um, and let them know, let them know that, um, and, and just let them know that you, you know, you, you felt seen. Let us know how you thought about tonight. So thank you for joining us again. So we will leave you to it, ladies. Thank you. And I appreciate you so much. Love you all so dearly. Thank you. Love you Tatiana. Thank you. Bye. Bye.